Okay, students, in this tutorial, we're going to look at getting materials from the internet. Now, by default, the starter content of Unreal comes with a decent number of basic materials, but sometimes maybe you, ha you don't have access to the exact material you're looking for. Sometimes we can get that by importing packages of some of our pre-made files and assets, but sometimes you just want to find the exact material you're looking for. Now, the internet is a great place to look for materials and has many good resources that you can sign up at for, for free. Uh, one of my favorites is textures.com, but you have a daily limit to how many you can download from. Some others are texturehaven.com, texturecan.com, and if you have an Unreal uh, account, you can also use Quixel, which if you log in with your Unreal account, you have access to their entire Megascans library, as long as you use this stuff with Unreal and you're able to download all sorts of materials and assets. For this example, I'm gonna use textures.com, and we're gonna look at one of their 3D scanned materials. Let's do this damaged concrete. So if I want this cool damaged concrete material in Unreal, I need to download these textures. In this instance, there are five. The albedo, or base color, the displacement, the normal map, the ambient occlusion, or AO, and the roughness map. So I'm going to download each of these. Here they are in my downloads folder. Now, I could just drag them in here, but I don't want my content browser to start getting really messy. So I've made a textures folder by going to right click and new folder. With my textures folder open, I'm just going to drag from my downloads window into the content browser. These images did not work because they are TIFFs and Unreal does not use TIFFs. It only uses PNGs or JPEGs. One solution, which I will do off camera, is I can convert these with Photoshop into PNGs. Another would be to download a different set. For example, TextureCan will give me a different damaged concrete texture, and their 2K maps that I download here will probably be JPEGs or PNGs. Okay, so I used Photoshop to turn our textures.com textures into PNG, as well as I downloaded the same texture can textures, which are now JPEGs. I'm gonna drag both in and we can even compare the result. When it imports, I often get this warning and it says, hey, this one, underscore normal, was imported as a normal map. That is actually great. That means that our one that's labeled normal is being treated as a normal map, which has some different settings in the editor. We actually want to see that. I'm going to do the same here with the concrete JPEGs from TextureCan. Now, I can't put these on a surface, and if I do, it will create an automatic texture for me set up in a way I don't want. What I do want to do is to make a new material. I'm going to make a folder for it, new folder, material. In this folder, I'm going to right click and choose new material. I'm going to call this one concrete underscore textures dot com. Can't put the dot in it, but textures com. And I'll make the second one and call it concrete underscore texture can because we'll compare them. I'm going to double click to open it. And if you've taken 3D Studio Max, this should look relatively familiar as it's basically the same as our slate material editor. I'm going to go back in my folders so I can get to my textures folder. Here I can drag the materials in. I'm going to grab in the textures.com material. And this one, it says on it, is the albedo, which means I plug it into base color. Next is this one, AO, 
which means I plug it into ambient occlusion. Next is height or displacement map, which we can use these, but there's a number of additional steps. So for this tutorial, I'm going to ignore it, but you can leave it in here and later we'll use it uh, in a later tutorial. Here I have my normal map, which goes into normal. And lastly, I have roughness, which is going to go into our roughness map. At this point, we can see our material. And I can click Save. And if we look at it here in our material folder, I can select an object and drag the material in. And as soon as it finishes compiling that material, I will have it on the surface. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one while I'm here. Textures. Let's take these guys into here. This one's ambient occlusion. I'm checking here on their names. This one's base color. That one's our roughness. This one I can tell is the normal map because of how it looks, which means that this last one here is our displacement map, which we will save till later. It actually goes into world displacement, but we'll have to change a bunch more settings to make it work. We'll go ahead and click save. And then in my materials folder, here's this one. We can put it on there. It's often useful to find the exact texture you're wanting. Both of these are concrete with exposed rebar, but they obviously have extremely different results and looks. That said, you can take just about anything you find on the internet and choose to make it into a material. Earlier, I googled cool seamless texture and I found a bunch of these. From there, I actually found this neat blog called Wild Textures. Anything that says seamless in its name means that it matches up when it repeats, which is obviously what we're looking for when we put materials on surfaces. I'm going to click on this one. And download this image. Now that it's in my downloads folder, I can put it in the textures folder. And when you have a single image as your texture, instead of one that has multiple pieces, you can just right click on it and tell it to create a material. I'll take a moment to compile. Then I can put it on my surface. One last thing I will show you when bringing textures in is sometimes they're not the scale you want. The simple way to fix that is to open it up in the texture editor and to add another node. I'm going to right click and type texture C O O R D or texture coordinate, which gives us this node. This node always goes into the UV node. So if you have multiple pieces, this same node can go into each of them. This node here gives us access to the U tiling and the V tiling, which should be familiar from 3D Studio Max. If I reduce this number to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, for example, my texture will get bigger on the surface. And if I increase the number, such as like 4, 4, it will get smaller on the surface as the texture will repeat more times across whatever surface it's on. You have to make sure to save this change before any of it will appear in the world. Once I save, this material we see here gets bigger. 